What's good, Josh? Bull Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out Shawn Michaels hated me after I said this to him. Now I've been seeing this channel pop up in my uh, sub box for quite some time. Stevie Richards' uh, YouTube channel, uh, former wrestler. I know um, Maven also has a YouTube channel, and I never actually had, well, never actually took the time to actually just watch their you know youtubes but i know a few of you guys have said to check out some of their videos on youtube and it seems like they've both been killing it so uh i definitely wanted to see you know what uh stevie richards had to say you know about sean michaels we all know sean michaels history yeah he, uh, he wasn't <laughs> uh, i guess you could say the most likable person back in like the the late 80s early 90s or whatnot but, you know, it seems as if, you know, things had changed for him, you know, as the years went by and he, you know, seemed to be more of a likable person behind the scenes or backstage. So it's very interesting to, to hear that, you know, um, that Shawn Michaels hated Stevie Richards, which is kind of crazy when you really think about it. But we're going to find out what went on in this particular situation. Once again, uh, appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel. And let's see with uh what stevie richards has to say about uh sean michaels man never meet your heroes i regret even bringing that up to him i really do damn man that sucks okay, i want to start with brett if that's okay because it's yes. a much shorter story i met brett at an fcw so this was an angsty before an angsty they had fcw as a developmental territory uh in tampa florida steve kern had run it and i went down there for like I guess coaching. I think they were trying to figure out if they were going to take me out of the ring, make me a coach. I met Brett. I had a big thing of like Arizona iced tea, like the diet iced tea. Oh, damn. Because my voice was was gone again. <laughs> it was really not doing very well. And Brett came up to me and I, I was going up to him to introduce myself. Before I could say anything, he goes, he sounded just like Stu Hart, by the way. He was just like, <laughs> eh, you know, iced tea, huh? works every time or something i was like what <laughs> and i went and i think he was and this was a, a shoot interview i did a long time ago where they used the clickbait title and i guess you'll use it too brett didn't shake my hand mm. so i went up to brett he said that and i kind of laughed like but i didn't understand what it meant and then i went to shake his hand but i think it just as i did that he turned towards Cole cabana so i had my hand out for a good oh. 12 seconds and then i brought my hand down damn imagine bro imagine you meeting somebody like you know brett legendary wrestler you go for the handshake like yeah man and he turns at, at the exact moment you're about to get the handshake and you just got your hands sitting out there on that lonely island just just sitting there just empty-handed just mm, right here mm. i know that sucked <laughs> I know that sucked, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and he turned around to me and he was talking to everybody. And this was like so funny to me because, and it might have sounded like a jerk when I answered, but he was talking to everybody like, hey, how long you been, how long you been training? How long you been here? Blah, 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 going around. He got to me and he goes, how long you been training? And I said, well, about 18 years. And he went, what? He just kind of did the, huh? <laughs> so, and I and finally, I was like, my name's Stevie Richards, shook his hand, and I was asking him how he's doing and everything. And that was the end of it. But it was just like, and I felt bad afterwards because mm. I was just trying to be funny and sarcastic. But if you're not, just like he was probably being sarcastic and I didn't get it mm -hmm. early. If you don't know somebody, you can't do that. So I probably came off like, it was like 18 years and he probably forgot about me five minutes later. But yeah. It was just, that was my only dealing with Brett. I've had a few more with Sean. So uh -oh. Uh -oh. both very positive and somewhat disappointing. The positive one was when he first came back, he would always complimented me on the shape I was in. And this was after I went up to him and said, hey, I'm not going to use the kick at yours. We talked about that mm -hmm. in a previous clip in a previous episode. So I, I already was familiar. I introduced myself probably for a 13th, 14th, maybe 25th time to him. And then I said, you know, Sean seems pretty, pretty cool. 
And Hunter would joke around and say, here's your idol, here's your idol, which I was wow. totally fine with, you know, because Hunter knew Sean was somebody, main reason I got into the business. Okay. Sean, I don't know, knew that or not. So I went up to him and I said, hey, man, can I talk to you for like two minutes, please? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Pulled him aside in catering or by the, by the entrance where nobody was and said, I just want to let you know that you're the reason I got into professional wrestling. I was a big fan of yours even before Heartbreak Kid, talking about Midnight Rockers, talking Damn. about that versus uh, Doug Summers and Buddy Rose and AWA. And I was like, I was just such a huge fan and you made such an impression on me that I just wanted to thank you for because I wouldn't be in WWE today if it wasn't for you inspiring me to to overcome the odds and be a wrestler. Damn, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Shook my hand and walked away. After that point, at first I was thought, is, is Hunter or Hunter and Sean together usually, or even one on one, he would do it. Are they just kind of haze me a little bit and give me a hard time because I said this? So I kind of took it in stride and laughed with him wherever. But then the language started to get into like, are you trying to, and we've all met our heroes. They've disappointed us at one time or another. Unfortunately. I started to get the impression that he resented the fact that I told him this. And I was like, is he trying to get me to change my mind about how I feel about, oh, you think I'm such a good guy and a hero and inspiration? And I just got this very off-putting vibe for him from him from that point on hmm. it was almost like i thought we were becoming pretty friendly not friends or anything mm -hmm. pretty friendly where i could ask him to watch my match or advice and he would give it but that moment kind of turned everything around and put it in a downward spiral so that was my first thing and then i had a friend who was a christian uh, musician and a band and he was burning CDs and stuff. And he was like, hey, if you know anybody in the locker room that would give it a listen, I really like to, you know, get the word out. I'm just giving this stuff away. I want to get the word out. Fit Finley was one. There was a couple other guys that were really like, oh, that's cool. I can listen to this in the car. We're, this is so long ago. We mm -hmm. had CD players, which were <laughs> brand new. I yeah. use air quotes. No, they got great. Yeah, man. Uh, times have changed, man. Kids don't know much about CD players. What? What is that? But that's what we was listening to, man. We was listening. Somebody burn you a CD, you know. And I remember the days. I'm going to sound old here. But I remember the days where we would figure out how to be able to load up, like, 500 songs on one cd comment down below if y'all remember doing that like we in high school we figured out how to put like you know a whole bunch of songs on one cd so you didn't have to burn so many cds uh we knew somebody that was doing that at our school and uh you know we were paying them who <laughs> was some young entrepreneurs people were paying them to load up cds with like 500 of their favorite songs or whatever or, or, you know, whatever type of genre and put so many of them. This is before MP3s became a thing and stuff like that. So, but yeah, man, that's, that's what it was to get your music out. Hey man, share my CD. Right from the cassette tapes. <laughs> God, there's, there are people who are like, what the hell is a cassette tape? Yeah. You're so, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I had an eight track when I was a kid. <laughs> Elvis. We used to listen to it at lunchtime all the time. So. By the way, little little Easter egg too. I love the fact that when Sean turned heel and broke away from Marty Jannetty, that during the course of the TV tapings, they would announce that Shawn Michaels had left the building. So he was a huge Elvis fan too. <laughs> so I was passing around these these CDs, only about maybe maybe half a dozen or eight, and I said, "Oh, I got to find Sean because he would talk a little bit about his his journey, his Bible study, or whatever." Okay. And I even helped him put his computer to get some digital stuff onto his laptop. I was tech support, by the way, for him, Undertaker, and a bunch of other people. <laughs> so, but I went up to him and I said, hey, Sean, I go, I have a friend who's in a Christian rock band, or I think it was Christian rock. Okay. Uh, and he wanted me to pass out some stuff to the boys. And I go, you know, I couldn't think of a better person that could listen to this but you. Okay. And he was, he looked at it looked at me, looked at the CD, and he goes, let me ask you a question. And I, my heart sank because I was like, this uh -oh. isn't the response I was <laughs> I was hoping for. And he goes, do you think giving me one of these makes you a good Christian? What? 
And I was like, uh, I felt like crying at that point, James. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, what? what, what? Where did that come from? <laughs> no, that's all I could do is what? And he's like, answer my question. Do you think this makes you a good Christian? I go, well, no. I go, but I was just trying to. And he was like, and I don't remember because I shut it out, dude. But I could swore he gave me, he gave, I'm getting choked up. He gave me the CD back. Damn. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? Damn. I just walked away. I was like, okay. Now, what made it kind of like me not thinking I was singled out or, you know, dealing with the two sides of Shawn Michaels, Dreamer, Dreamer told me this himself, and I believe it. He was sitting at catering with Shawn Michaels, and Shawn was telling him, you know, when you get out there, you got to get, you know, basically get your stuff in, do this, make sure you get over. He was really like kind of not browbeating, but very intently telling Dreamer, you got to be vicious. You got to do that. And, and Dreamer goes, but Sean, I thought you were a Christian. And he goes, but I still got to get mine. So he said, I am, but I still got to get mine. Huh. This was right. And Dreamer couldn't wait to tell me because he goes, because I told him about the CD incident. And I was, you could tell, even when I just recalled it, you could tell how it hurt me. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I just want to let you know, dude, it's not just you. And he told me the story and it did kind of make me feel better. But it made me feel a lot worse because I was like, why, why does it have to be both ways? Damn. That's like, kind of, you can, you know, I mean, that's kind of, and you can tell this is, is, you know, it still gets to him because that's his idol. That's the person he looked up to, to get into the wrestling business. So imagine you meet your idol. You tell them this initially that you're, you know, Hey, it's, it's so great to have met you. You're the reason why I got into this. Then the said person that you, you know, looked up to, be like, all right, cool. But then they, they start to treat you different, and it seems like it's an issue that you even said that. But, but, you know, you don't really try to read too much into it. And then you looking out for a friend. Oh, shit, I, I work with my idol. Let me see. You know, he's he's a Christian now or whatnot. Let me give this to him. I, you know, you, you think of people that it would make sense to give a CD to that they would listen to. All right, cool. Shawn Michaels, one of the one people, all right, cool. And then give you give them the sad thing. And then they they essentially try to turn on it like this and make you a good person, a good Christian that you gave this to me. Cause I'm Christian. Like, you know, it's like, damn, bro, I was just trying to trying to help out my homie. And, you know, I thought it would be something that you would be interested in. That's kind of tough. That is definitely kind of tough. It, it definitely give some asshole vibes when there's no need to do that like if i'm I, man i can think of so many times people gave me an acd i knew i wasn't gonna listen to her i didn't care to but i would still take it out the courtesy you know what i'm saying and maybe maybe something would compel me to listen to it but the fact to be like nah i'm good on it like what do you think you're doing like i don't know man i, I think that's kind of a little unnecessary and it just it just sucks because that's truly his idol and you can tell that um it, you know, it kind of hurt him, man. I was just like, and I avoided Sean every single time I say hello to him or whatever, but I would normally go the opposite way. Damn. So fast forward years and years and years later, one of the NXT writers reached out to me and I'm friends with a mutual friend, Danny Jacks up in Massachusetts. Great kid. Awesome. Awesome dude. And he goes, I didn't know you were friends with Danny Jackson. I was like, yeah, he's an awesome dude. And then he said something about NXT and being there. And I said, oh, just wondering, does Sean still hate me? LOL. <laughs> and then he messaged back and he was like, Sean doesn't hate or not hate anybody. He's like Switzerland. Oh, uh, like, okay. Okay. <laughs> not going to be any, any CDD, CDs out to him anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> so I, okay. I'm sorry. I got, a, I got a little bit emotional and choked up about it. And, you know, I'm kind of like trying to find my words. But that to me was like, if you ever met, somebody and you verbalized or tried to mm. put it out that this person inspired you to do something or you go as far to say you're my hero you just got to be careful i know just how many times has dutch said it never meet your heroes and i really am like i regret even bringing that up to him i really do damn but man for the sake of it i'm kind of glad it happened because i got to see it mm. and that's the end of it 
and maybe I maybe I kind of marked out for Sean and I put him over and maybe he respected me less because of it. But I sure as hell learned a hell of a lesson that day that if any young wrestler or anybody I encounter mm. who gives any reverence or any respect or even just is cool or has a question or is looking for a direction in the business, I'm never, ever, ever going to act like it's an inconvenience, mm. like I'm annoyed by it, nor as, as uncomfortable as I am taking compliments, which you know that, James, uh, <laughs> as uncomfortable as I am taking compliments, I will never argue with somebody who says these things to me. I'm going to take that as, wow, out of all the people in the business here, I stood out to you. That's awesome. I had one follow-up question. Damn, I mean, me, man. How did Sean change over time? Because he obviously had the pre uh, uh, religious sort of experience and they sort of dedicates his life to it. But I've heard quite a few people, I don't know if it's Shane Helms or someone, I hope I'm not getting the name wrong, just basically said, it's a front. Yeah, he he, fam he famously uh, cursed out Chris Jericho at catering and, and Shane, Shane saw it. That's what Shane's talking about. Uh. That he was the old Shawn Michaels and for some reason he was browbeating Jericho and I could be wrong, but I believe that was the person and Shane witnessed it and said, this dude's a phony. I think he even told me about it. Like anytime anybody experienced anything with Sean that they think might be useful to me, they would tell me about it. Cause that's who, that's who I believe either told me or I saw the interview and then he talked to me about it. I think in that example, it was, if the interview was after WWE, by the way, when he was gone. Yeah. So I think Chris Jericho wrote about it in maybe his third book. And I think it revolved around the fact that Chris was drunk <laughs> And he made some sort of comment to Sean that Sean was keeping his kids up late. So it was like a pay-per-view or WrestleMania night or something like that. And Sean took umbrage on it. I don't know if that's the incident or it was something else. Hmm. Well, that's, I mean, that's a whole different set of rules and context and conversation that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. I mean, you talk about somebody's family, kids, or yeah. especially how to raise them or when to put them yeah. to bed. I, I figure any parent would yeah. <laughs> kind of like take take offense to that yeah, that's, or take issue. That's, that's uh, I, I don't, you know, once again, not there. So, you know, I wouldn't know. But I'm I'm pretty sure you say that, you know, most parents are going to be like, yo, what? Especially if you drunk. Like, hey, 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 shut up, Jericho. But, hey, man, it, you know, it's very unfortunate, man. It's definitely very unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead and, and give this a like because um, this was a dope video, bro. This was definitely dope. Uh, once again, let me make myself disappear real quick so y'all can see. Y'all go, if you haven't already, subscribe to Stevie Richards' channel, uh, former wrestler. Um, I also said at the beginning of the video, I believe Maven has a YouTube channel as well. So if y'all want me to check out one of his videos, I definitely can. But it's dope to see wrestlers. I think The Undertaker has a YouTube channel now. Getting into their bag and showing, you know, their talking about their life experiences in the business, you know, and some things that obviously we wouldn't know because we weren't a part of the business. We only watch it from the outside. So, but it's unfortunate that he met Shawn Michaels, his idol, his hero, and, you know, it kind of didn't go that way. And that's why, you know, for me, and dub when we meet people or or when they tell us this in the dms or whatever like hey man you guys inspired me to do this to do to create this we'll never sit up there and say you know we don't care or you know we you know you know we'll give off that vibe like whatever like it, that's not important to us nah because we know at the end of the day if it isn't for y'all we are not in the place that we're in and the same thing with wrestlers if it isn't for y'all going to the shows and buying the merch and watching the pay-per-views then who knows the wrestlers At the end of the day the fans and the support the subscribers who whatever you want to call your fan base they matter so when someone takes the time to even say that to us we truly appreciate it man we we, re we really do um we never want to be the individuals of Oh, we too high and mighty to appreciate those that appreciate us because you know it, it this is how this this back and forth works so but comment down below let me know if you guys want me to check out some more uh cv richards videos uh i see he has one uh on one of the recommended videos is uh 
Bill was reckless talking about Bill Goldberg. So that could be an interesting one if you guys want me to check that out. And uh, also, if you wanted me to check out uh, maybe some of the Undertaker's videos that he has on YouTube or even Maven, because I've seen his pop up a whole bunch. And it seems like, you know, he's been killing it when it comes to the YouTube content. But I appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.